Hey guys, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my overview on the main story events for patch 2.4. Due to the nature of this video, there will be many major story spoilers, as well as some personal thoughts or speculations thrown in, so if you want to avoid these things, please click away from the video now. The start of the story here picks up where 2.3 left off, with Alfino overseeing the actions of the Crystal Braves. It is not long before he assigns the adventurer to work with his second-in-command, Captain Elbert, on a troubling matter. It has been revealed that amidst the Immortal Flames there is a Garlean spy, one known only as the Ivy. This person has influenced many men and women within the Immortal Flames ranks to pass intel back to Garlemald. The adventurer's goal is to help uproot this issue. To do so, they must accompany Ilberd to Ulda, where Raubon is given a briefing on this discovery. With this information, he alerts his most trusted soldiers of the situation whilst the adventurer and Ilberd return to Mordona. After performing several more tasks for Alfino, the adventurer is asked to accompany him to a meeting with the Lord Commander of the Ishgardian Temple, Sir Amaric. He hopes to convince the Lord Commander that Ishgard should rejoin the Eorzean Alliance. However, despite his pleas, Sir Amaric proclaims that he has no influence on Ishgardian policy, and that even if he did, Ishgard has no forces to spare so long as they must fend off the Dravanian armies. Instead, he says what he can do is ensure that House Fortom can continue sending supplies to Revenant's Toll and act fellow houses have spoken out against. In return, he requests only that the Crystal Braves watch over the Keeper of the Lake, Midgard Solmer, as Ishgard fears the Dravanians may be in the process of resurrecting him. Should he be resurrected, Eorzea will know a new kind of fear. Alfino agrees to these terms in hopes it will be the first of many steps towards uniting Ishgard and the other city-states. However, within moments of the agreement, the latest shipment to Revenant's Toll is intercepted by Lady Iceheart's followers. Iceheart murdered everyone in the caravan except for a single man who only survived by feigning his death. This man overheard the mention of resurrecting Shiva. Shiva, according to Ishgardian history, was a saint who laid with a dragon. Considering the degree of this crime by Ishgardian standards, she was given the ultimate punishment, death. Alfino now worries that these heretics will indeed summon another primal in the form of the long-lost saint, and makes it his primary goal to stop her. After discovering that the heretics are using a system of underground tunnels in Coorthus to move unnoticed by the Holy See of Ishgard, the adventurer also discovers that they possess a parchment of shifts that the guards take at Snowcloak. This leads Lord Drillmont to believe an attack on the forces at Snowcloak is inevitable, a feeling Sir Amaric also has. As Alfino and the adventurer stumble upon some heretics there, the Crystal Braves and several Scions show up, stating that a system of tunnels was found to have a much higher activity than the rest. Alfino bids the adventurer and a small party traverse these tunnels and stop Iceheart at the end of them. Though they are able to progress through the tunnels, the small party is unable to stop Iceheart's escape. She speaks of doing what she must to end the endless war between man and dragon, and that the warrior of light of all people should understand her goal. With these words, she uses the nearby Aetherite in the tunnel to teleport to another location, before destroying the path behind her so none could follow. With her plan of summoning Saint Shiva coming even closer, the Scions begin to realize just how little they know of Ishgard's past. The scriptures give some explanation, but they are scarce when it comes to the exact details of the nation's origins or how the war with the dragons truly began. Without more information, it is becoming increasingly difficult to come up with a plan to stop Iceheart. The problems begin stacking up. Garlemald's War of Succession is nearing its end, meaning they may attack again soon, especially with the Ivy still around. Shiva, Ishgard, and the Dravanian conflict are all becoming a greater issue, and of course, the Assians still plot in the name of their one true god. Fortunately, a merchant is apprehended at the Observatorium in Corthus. Though Alfinod is not the most optimistic about what they can get out of him, anything will help when it comes to stopping the Ivy. Unfortunately for the Warrior of Light, it is revealed that Garlemald's War of Succession after their Emperor's recent passing has actually ended. In the end, his grandson, Varys Zos Galvis, took control of the Empire. This unfortunately means the armies will be upon Eorzea again soon, as he was the one who spoke up against the Meteor Project in favor of annexing Eorzea. With this new Emperor, the Eorzean Alliance must begin making preparations for the return of the Empire. One such preparation is removing the Ivy, a task Ilbert has been solely focused on and has finally made solid ground on. He has discovered the Ivy is none other than Flame Marshal Aline Royale, Roban's second-in-command. 
After carefully watching her and ensuring to catch her in the act of communicating with the Imperials, you finally catch her with the help of Yugiri and several Domen ninjas. While this hopefully means that the Immortal Flames can begin uprooting all she's done, her feigning ignorance means the struggle is not yet over. Upon returning to Revenant's Toll, Minfilia tells the adventurer that they will need help reaching Iceheart's lair. For this, she has called upon a Charlayan colleague named Moonbrida, a Rogadin woman with a previous friendship to Urian J and the other Scions. Upon discussing possibilities with the Scions, she deduces that they may yet be able to travel to the destroyed Aetherite. By storing the Aether of the Scions in a chunk of white orosite, a material Moonbrida brought with her, she may be able to use it to detect remains of the Aether flow that was traveling to the destroyed Aetherite and create a beacon by which the adventurer can travel. It should succeed, but if it doesn't, the adventurer is made clear that they will die, painlessly, but a death is a death. Fortunately for the adventurer, upon execution of the plan, it works without any death occurring, and they are brought to the lair of Iceheart, the Akafa Amphitheater. Unfortunately, as they approach her, she begins what appears to be a summoning ritual as she is surrounded by ice. Using her own body as a vessel, she summons Saint Shiva, whom they must defeat if they wish to leave this place alive. The adventurer is able to overcome Shiva, though what results after is troubling. Iceheart not only survives the encounter, but retains her will. She held the power of a god and was able to control it perfectly. And though she scolds the adventurer for opposing her, she asks them to seek out the Keeper of the Lake and see with eyes unclouded. She also oddly says three familiar words, hear, feel, think. These words could be none other than the words that Heidelin has said to the adventurer many times before, and implies that Iceheart may have had access to the Echo. And all throughout these shocking developments, the Asians watch from afar, content with the outcome of the battle. With all this new information, it is important that the adventurer returns to Revenant's Toll and discloses them immediately, but they first stop by Camp Dragonhead to alert them of the situation. Upon arriving, Sir Amric requests an audience with the adventurer and Alfino, though about what they are not sure. He thanks them for slaying the Primal and hopes that seeing this threat for themselves will promote a change in Ishgardian policy. He claims that they must no longer watch over Midgard Salmer as payment, though Alfino states that they are now showing interest in the Dravanian affairs as well. Despite this common ground, Sir Amaric admits that it was in Ishgardian's best interest to see Revenant's Toll flourish so that they may defend them against any other enemies. At first, Alfino is disgusted with the manipulation of Sir Amaric, but after some explanation he relents and realizes that they still share a common goal of wishing to see a united Eorzea. As a token of goodwill, he shares information regarding the merchant you captured before, in hopes of it helping to uproot the ivy. Alfino takes this gesture and bids farewell. Now, the adventurer returns to Revenant's Toll to disclose their final moments with Iceheart. The Scions are troubled by all that has occurred, from how Iceheart managed to control Shiva's power to the very definition of a primal itself. However, Iceheart's plea to visit Midgard Summer may yet yield information about how the Ishgardian conflicts with Dravania truly began, and so the Scion shall carefully watch over him. Now with Iceheart out of the way, the adventurer can ensure the conflict with Aline Royale has come to a rest. Unfortunately, it is found that she escaped and is making her way to reunite with her Imperial allies in Northern Thanalan. Along with the Crystal Braves and the Ninjas of Doma, the adventurer is able to recapture her. These events trouble Althino, and he takes his leave to inform Raubon of the developments. Meanwhile, Moonbrida decides to share with the Scions more information regarding White Orosite and how it may allow them to defeat the Asians. If they can absorb the Aether of an Asian soul into one, and then destroy their soul, it may prevent them from escaping into the world between worlds and reforming. The problem remains in the fact that the Orosite cannot retain Aether for long, and they need an equally powerful weapon of Aether to execute the Asian soul, preferably in the form of the Weapon of Light Hydaelyn granted to the adventurer when they faced off against La Habrea. Unfortunately, these questions don't yet have answers, so the Scions are forced to study their previous encounters with the Primals and Asians alike for a better solution. Back at Ulda, Raubon is told that Royale was not just working under the command of the 14th Legion, but that she also served a higher power within the Empire. She answered directly to the former High Legatus and the now Emperor, Verizos Galvis. On top of that, she also sold information to a third party within Eorzea, which Raubon expects is none other than the Monetarist, most likely to Legiada Legi, who is still scheming even to this very moment. And finally, she was also feeding intelligence to the heretics under Iceheart, 
Who stood to profit from that exchange? Who knows? With all these answers lies even more questions, and thus, Raubon must interrogate Royale in hopes of finding these answers. After Alfino takes his leave, Raubon remains, troubled over Royale's alliance with the Monetarists specifically. He swears to them that he will see them rot and pay for their crimes. Meanwhile, Nanamo has called a meeting with the leaders of the other Eorzean nations. In this meeting, she explains the difficulty she now faces as a sultana, saying that while she is the leader of the nation, she can do nothing to help it. She claims that Uldah will never see in the interest of the people as long as it is controlled by so few, hinting not only that she may dissolve the syndicate, but that she may step down as sultana, breaking the lines of inheritance that have ruled Uldah for so long. She asks the other leaders to ensure Uldah remains strong and whispers her apologies to Raoban for all the troubles he has gone through for her. And with that, ends this chapter in the A Realm Reborn story. So we can assume that 2.5 is going to be the final chapter of this story. They have said 2.5 will be broken up into two sections. I don't know if that just means 2.5 and 2.55, if there's going to be two major story developments in order to help really bring us in to Heavensward with the Ishgardian conflict. But just as with similar patches, uh, there there's a lot of conflicts here going on at the same time. There's a new conflict brought in. There's a continuation of the ASEAN conflict where some headway is made and not a whole lot. And then we actually had to kind of redefine what a primal is in this patch, similar to how we had to kind of question it when Good King Magomag the 12th came out. Now, I could go on for days and days and days about this story uh, in particular, the one we got in patch 2.4, but I am going to just give a few overview thoughts and then I'll make extended videos regarding my thoughts on each of the individual events that took place here and how they may evolve, especially with regards to the expansion coming out next year. So Nanamo Onamo, she's the last of the Ul line, according to her, and she is most likely going to be dissol dissolving this this royalty thing. You know how a king inherit uh, the prince inherits the the kingdom, or the princess inherits the kingdom, and they get married, and they have a similar line of that where the daughter or son of the previous ruler is the immediate inheritance of the people of the city and then they have a syndicate where which they can discuss similar to sort of how uh, american governments have you know we have representatives that go for each state they don't see necessarily in the eyes of the people they just do their best to sort of represent their state and unfortunately those members are uh, the equivalent are very very corrupt especially to legi out legi ever since last patch i was actually kind of a um, little bit weirded out that there's so many sort of open loopholes out there with only most likely one major patch to go, maybe two if 2.5 is really split up into two major patches. Um, because we have Omega Weapon, we have Telegi Adelegi, those two things are the same. We are absolutely nowhere close to dealing with the Asian threat. We're absolutely not going to have the, Garla, the Garlean threat dealt with by next patch, which means that a lot of this conflict is sorry about that, absolutely going to be uh, pouring over into Heaven's Word, which makes me wonder more and more so if players are going to have to complete all of the story to move on and level or do the main story parts in Heaven's Word. There's a possibility that maybe they'll make all of these missions give experience points so that players can level off of them from 50 to 60, but at the same time for players who have already completed it, level from 51 to 60 off of the new Heavensward main story missions. It's not really 100% clear, and they could really do whatever they want with it, but those are kind of my guesses here. It's just we have so many things that are unfinished, and especially with Alfino constantly mentioning primals and how they keep being resummoned, it makes you wonder what the point of even you know defeating the extreme primals was and uh, they keep getting stronger and stronger, can it keep going? And has Dravania really never dealt with primals before? I feel like there's so many things here that just need explaining that don't make a whole lot of sense. We already know that there are beast tribes in Dravania that have access to the idea of summoning primals. It may be possible that Dravania is not as steeped in Aether as Eorzea is, and therefore some sort of event that will sort of spread the Aether, or maybe the inclusion of us interfering with the Dravanian conflicts may the, uh, the surge of adventurers and 
uh, people from Eorzea who have already been exposed to all this Aether may actually give the new Beast Tribes, the ones that have existed but haven't have had these gods but have never done anything with them, uh, it may give them access to this kind of power as well. It just seems a little too convenient that one by one by one the Primals are summoned and that there's never this collective summoning that goes on minus one event earlier in the main story where we had Garuda, Shiva, I mean, not Shiva, Garuda, Ifrit, and Titan all at the same time, but we didn't even get to fight them. That was just more of an expositional thing to show off how powerful Ultima Weapon was. So, Omega Weapon, Nanamo, Telegi out Legi. We have Elidobus and Lahabrea. They're still a big threat. Zodiark is still a big thing, and we, they, we haven't even... We've seen him very briefly. Like it's 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 curious to me. There's also the Isle of Val, which is we still don't know much about how it completely was wiped from existence, as well as all of the other students of Baldessian. They reveal the very specific uh, thing that those students were studying on. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I am going to make a video about it. I believe it was called the Rejoining, off the top of my head, and every one of those students disappeared. There's just so many open things like that just need closure and i have a feeling they're all going to be tied and come to a close around the same time the only thing that that won't happen with is is the garlean empire and it makes me think that the 4.0 expansion and i know that's thinking far in advance since they've said they're already planning for 4.0 like that's already in their timeline it definitely makes me feel like pushing back against the against Garlemald and the Empire, uh, taking back Alamigo and working our way up towards Garlemald. I have a big feeling that's going to be a theme, just based on how many things we're trying to deal with here at the same time, and how even Ishgard is like, we don't think they'll attack for some time, which definitely tells you that as we're dealing with the Dravanian the Dravanian problems that the Orzean Alliance is going to still be working with Ishgard to bring them in to fight back against Garlemald. There's so many things, and especially Midgard Summer, the idea of him coming back, so many people have wanted him revived. He was this massive figure, similar to Bahamut, which we never got to fight, and it would just be crazy if he had something to do with the more dangerous zones we'll be dealing with. So death, almost like Deathwing, how he would kill people when he was flying by. I'm wondering if in Heaven's Word, Midgard Sommer is going to do the same thing. If you're flying around and Midgard Sommer finds you at any point, you're just going to be like, wow, I'm dead, which would be very similar to what Yoshi P said. But like I said, I could go on with this for ages, but I'm going to break it down into several different videos and hopefully get your opinions about each individual one. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV news, information, guides, whatever. I got it. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.